This one is a sequel to the first one. If you guys remember Gary Brecka, Gary Brecka is back. He's the co-founder and chief human biologist of 10X Health Systems. He is a freaking guy that basically can look at your blood and tell you when you're going to die and be right within about, what, a week? Mm, month. Month. How, imagine getting a blood test from someone that can literally look at your blood. And if you don't change what you're doing, can anticipate how long your lifespan will be and be correct within about a month time. Now, last time you were here, dude, your your phones blew up and your website blew up. Are we prepared for this visit? We're prepared for this one. If people want what we're going to talk about and they want to get a blood test, mm -hmm. where do they go? They go to my Instagram at Gary Brecka, G-A-R-Y-B-R-E-C-K-A. Okay, guys. So listen, trust me. And, and th these aren't expensive tests. No. They're basically uh, lifesavers. No I like question. To call. So no last question. time, dude, a lot of people called in. I'm sure you freaking had a lot of different results happen. My blood that you saw, mm -hmm. you said was damn near miraculous. Virtually perfect. Yeah. I mean, you're significantly younger biologically than you are chronologically. Now, why, what, what do you think that is? Cause dude, I was drinking, smoking, partying, <laughs> eating. See, this is generally not, not the best way to recommend things to your audience, but you know, genetics play a role. Um, but clearly you're not abusing yourself as bad as you make it out to be because liver inflammation was low. The level of liver poisons was low. Your kidney inflammation was low. Your filtration rates through the kidney were through the roof. Your, the levels of kidney poison were very low. You had a very strong immune profile, meaning like your white blood cell profile showed a very strong immune system. Um, things like PSA were very low, which are other markers of inflammation. We got my labs. Yeah. we got your labs and we got your, um, and your gene test. Oh, beauty. So, so yeah. let's, cause we promised on the last episode that, that we would come back and talk about when I'm going to die and mm -hmm. what my shit looked like. <laughs> so based on those labs, talk about it. So these were done, uh, what December, uh, when October I was, of when last I was year. way less shaped than I am now. Yeah. October of last year. So things look really good. You know, we, when you go through labs, um, and for the record, I'm not, a physician. I'm not licensed to practice medicine. I'm a human biologist, so I'm not giving medical advice. Um, I have a whole team of physicians that give medical advice, but I am not one of those people. But when, when you look at a lab, you start with something called the CBC, which is where you just count up the contents of the blood. How many white blood cells do you have? How many red blood cells do you have? This section of the labs is really important because it tells me a couple of things. It tells me how strong your immune system is. I can look at your white blood cell profile, right? neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, something called eosinophils. We look at this profile, but then more importantly, I take a section of the labs and we look at RBCs, red blood cells and hemoglobin, because everything that you perceive about energy is nothing more than oxygen in your blood. If you told me Gary, I had a lot of energy today, physiologically, what you're saying is I had a lot of oxygen in my blood today. So if oxygen equals energy, which it does, then if I want to raise your energy level, I need to raise your blood oxygen level. And the way that we do that is improve red blood cell count and hemoglobin. Like think of a red blood cell as a tennis ball and hemoglobin is like a fluid inside that tennis ball. Well, it's inside that fluid that oxygen is bound. And this kind of stuff hides in plain sight on labs right? Your red blood cell counts in the normal range, but it's really, really, really low. Your hemoglobin levels in the normal range, but it's really, really, really low. And now you're tired and you don't sleep well. See, you would think the opposite. You would think that people that are really exhausted would sleep the best, right? But it's the opposite is true. People that are the most exhausted sleep the worst because it's related to the same thing, low levels of blood oxygen. So how do you increase your, your red blood cells? So you balance your hormones, Right, Because in men and women, the hormone testosterone, its primary role is not male characteristics. It's not facial hair, regression, big muscles. In men and women, the primary role of testosterone is to put pressure on the bone marrow to create new red blood cells. It's called erythropoiesis. So if you are deficient in testosterone, you are very likely deficient in red blood cells and hemoglobin. So by moving testosterone into the normal range, into the optimal range, you can elevate red blood cells and hemoglobin. And by the way, the way to do that is not always with hormone therapy. I would say 40 to 50% of our patients that qualify for hormone therapy are not on hormones. 
right? They're on raw materials. I mean, this is what I've dedicated the balance of my adult lifetime to, is the study of the human body and the physiology behind what happens when you take certain raw materials out of the human body. Will you get what appears to be pathology and disease? Like, for example, the hormone testosterone is made from something called DHEA. DHEA is made from something called vitamin D3. So if I pull vitamin D3 and DHEA out of the body, I can collapse my hormone level and I don't have any problem with hormones, right? In order to raise it, I just put those raw materials back into the human body, vitamin D3, DHEA, and very often you see hormone levels like testosterone rise back to the normal range. By the way, vitamin D3 is, is what I take a lot. Good. And yeah, you were 123 on your labs, if you don't mind me. Yeah, is that Saying good? That, uh, that's very good. I don't have an issue with it being over. The range is from 30 to 100. Most people are below 30. Um, most people are clinically deficient in vitamin D3. That's why COVID hit um, those people hard. Yeah, that's why COVID disproportionately affected minorities. It wasn't had nothing to do with their minority status. It had to do with the pigment of their skin. Do you think right? whoever created that did that on purpose? Oh, um, now we're getting freaking no banned. no actually i mean if you think about it they're just the, the the immune system suffers when you deplete vitamin d3 right but everyone the, should be on d3 everyone should be on now d3. do you need a k2 you should vehicle? take it with vitamin k2 5,000 i use of d3 with about 80 micrograms of k2 remember d3 amongst other things is a calcium transport molecule so i want the calcium to go into the bone not into the arterial wall. So vitamin K2 will make sure that that calcium makes its way into the bone and not into the arterial wall. Yeah, so don't just go out and get D3, folks. Get D3 with K2. They sell it with K2, too. Yes. That's mm -hmm. the one I take. They sell it with K2. Minimum 5,000 I use. 1,000 I use or 2,000 I, 2, 10, I use. a day. Yeah, most people should be on 10,000, but that's what you want to get blood work done for. That's yeah, so, what we put you on. So, so it, it, you know, obviously people are listening. What if they feel good? They... Everything's fine, but could there still be looming trouble in their blood? Well, when you say people feel good, that's that's their perception, right? I mean, most people have have accepted such an erosion of their baseline sense of normalcy. They've accepted a baseline sense of normalcy that is so far below their optimal level that they have not even realized it. You know, a lot of times after we see patients, they'll, they'll call me and go, oh my God, Gary, I feel amazing. And I always say, well, you don't really feel amazing. You, you just feel normal. That's what normal is supposed to feel like. You just forgotten how good normal feels. So if you're sleeping decently and, and you know, you're pretty happy with your physique and you know, your libido is decent and you don't feel like you have brain fog and you got a healthy response to exercise and you know, decent waking energy, you don't feel like your cognitive function is suffering. You could still be 60% of where your optimal state is. Mm. Look, if you look at Grant Cardone, for example, it was um, before I started treating him. If you go back on his Instagram four years, he looked 15 years older four years ago than he does today because now his blood work's dialed in perfectly. He doesn't have any nutrients, nutrient deficiencies in his blood. Most people are running around just kind of supplementing for the sake of supplementing. I'm not a big believer in just supplementing for, for the sake you, of supplementing. Do you sell those big oxygen tank things? We do. That's a game changer. See, because if oxygen makes it and you breathe in oxygen while you're working out. Oh, the presence of oxygen is the absence of disease. How, how do I get one of those oxygen things? I'll send you a link to get one. It's called the Hypermax O2 system. It's called exercise with oxygen therapy. So first you lay on a PEMF mat, pulse electromagnetic field. Looks like a yoga mat, right? You lay on this mat and it runs low gauss current through the body, about the same current as the surface of the earth. And what this will do is it'll alkalize all 32 trillion cells in the human body in about 16 minutes. I put mine right in my bed and I set a timer on it so it actually goes off while I'm sleeping. You don't even notice it. So when you wake up, all that EMF frequency is blown out of your body, right? You're, right now you've got 5G EMF, dirty EMF frequency. And by the way, the shoe has not dropped on 5G frequency yet. Stay tuned because that shoe is going to drop pretty hard. Um, when we, when we, start analyzing the impact on on cellular function so having a pemf mat will not only blow these frequencies out of your body but it will alkalize all 32 trillion cells in the body and, and disease cannot exist in alkaline states disease does not thrive in an alkaline environment all, all cancer has two common characteristics one it's dna replication run amok all cancer is aberrant dna replication and all cancer begins in a hypoxic environment on like oxygen, oxygen. Oxygen deprived environment. In fact, the 
you know, when, when I went back and talked about my career as a mortality expert, um, you know, people said, well, how did you predict so accurately when people were going to die? I said, well, first we predicted the onset of disease and then we would predict the severity of disease. And the way that we predicted both the onset and the severity of disease was by looking at how well or how poorly your, your body managed oxygen. Because think about it, every human being leaves this earth the same way. We all die of exactly the same thing. Everyone dies of hypoxia. The definition of death is lack of oxygen to the brain. Now, it might be a gunshot wound, a bus, a heart attack, a stroke. Um, you know, there's lots of reasons why that could happen. But when you can no longer sustain enough oxygen to the brain, that's the definition of death. But we tend to think of them as an event, right? Like something that happens to us. But that's not true. We're all on a hypoxic curve, a predictable curve. You're either managing oxygen very poorly in which case you're accelerating towards the grave, or you're managing oxygen very well, in which case you're moving very slowly towards the grave. And so the, the less steep we can make that curve, the further we push out the onset of pathology of disease, the less severe all pathologies and disease come. So how do I look in that regard? Your oxygen transport's excellent here. <laughs> and I'm not being paid to say that. I mean, your red blood cell counts in a great range. Um, you could probably, you know, use a little blood dump. Um, a little what? Blood dump. You yeah, know, uh, that's what, to, that, that was a year ago. Yeah, this was before you had your blood. Yeah, uh, I, we dumped drain. it when you were here. Yeah, if you look at the incidence. How often of, should someone blood dump? Two to three times a year after Damn, so testing. I'm, I'm, I'm two probably to three do. behind that. Turning your blood over is one of the healthiest things you can do. Because I didn't do it since you left. Ah. How See, do you blood dump? You just, you do an IV, you run 500 mLs of fluid in, you can take the IV off the pole and put it below the level of the heart. Yeah, but who pull does the same that? amount like, of fluid out. I ain't doing it our myself. Nurses, our doctors. Are you out of your mind? Or you can go to Red Cross and donate a pint of blood. That's it? Yeah. Just go, just go donate. Unless your blood's too thick, then they won't take it. Then we have to write you a script for something called therapeutic phlebotomy, which you actually donate the blood and then they toss it because it's too thick. Because remember, remember what we said about testosterone. Its primary role is to put pressure on the bone marrow to create new red blood cells. Well, now the blood can thicken with red blood cells, right? So we have to get some of those out. If you look at the incidence of cardiovascular disease between men and women, you'll see that men lead women by a huge margin until women stop menstruating. Right after they stop menstruating, there's a parabolic spike in the incidence of cardiovascular disease and women approximate men in the incidence of cardiovascular disease because they're not turning their blood over anymore. They're not bloodletting. They're not bloodletting. So it's very healthy for you to bloodlet. Hmm. Um, but in any case, interesting. back to the PEMF mat. You lay on this PEMF mat and you get alkaline. See, it's a total fallacy that you can make your blood alkaline by drinking alkaline water. It's like the biggest marketing myth to ever take, take hold and storm the planet. Um, you can drink alkaline water and not become more acidic, but it will not make you more alkaline. You cannot have the properties that make a... Um, cup of water alkaline transfer to a cup of blood and have them also maintain their properties. In other words, if this is salt water and this is water without salt, if I transfer the salt from this glass to this glass, it can't also be here. Can't be in two places at one time. So alkalinity is a charge, right? pH stands for potential hydrogen. So if I actually want to make myself more alkaline, I have to expose the body to a charge. That's why earthing and grounding is so good for us. You know, think about the last time that you walked barefoot on the surface of the earth, like bare feet touching bare sand or soil or dirt, not pavement, but grass, soil. You will discharge into the earth. You'll actually change the pH of your body, your tissues, by walking barefoot on the earth or laying on a PMF mat. And that's scientifically proven or a bunch of hippie shit? Oh, no, that's, uh, you can use an EMF meter and, and test it in real time. See, isn't fact, that weird, though? Doesn't that show you that, that there's got to be a, a, a higher power? Who, who would have known that the earth itself decharges the humans walking on it? Yeah. As long as you're not wearing the shoes. Oh, and earthing, all grounding. All the shit that the men, like, people made. Yeah. But, like, nature in and of itself is amazing. It's amazing. We get three things from Mother Nature. We get magnetism, oxygen, and light. And those three things are so important to human function. The magnetism from the earth keeps us alkaline. It grounds us. When we're alkaline, the red blood cells in your bloodstream separate. They start floating away from each other. See, remember, if you have, if two cells have the same charge, then they can't touch, right? They repel. 
right? And that's what you want because you want all that surface area exposed to the blood to bring nutrients in. But once they have opposite charges, they're attracted and they start to stick together and clump up like too many cars trying to take the same exit. Well, if I can make you alkaline in the morning, first thing in the morning, by eight to 16 minutes on a PMF mat, then all your red blood cells separate. And then you use that hypermax oxygen system. You put that oxygen mask on, it's 95% O2. And while you mildly exercise, you breathe 95% O2 into an alkaline system with all of these red blood cells free floating around. When you power up the mitochondria like that, it is unbelievable how good you feel, your mood, your emotional state, because human beings aren't powered by the food that we eat or the, or the supplements that we take. We're not powered by amino acids or proteins or carbohydrates or minerals or fats or any of those compounds we put in the body. We're powered by something called ATP, right? So eventually all of those nutrients get into the cell. They go into a part of the cell called the mitochondria and the mitochondria turns it into ATP. 10% of your body weight is mitochondria. Have you heard of NAD? Mm-hmm. Is that, is that good to take? Dinucleotide. What's that? Is that good to get? Um, NAD is excellent for you, but you can only do NAD um, either intravenously or via injection. But orally, you can take a precursor called nicotinamide riboside or nicotinic acid, right? These are B vitamins so that your body can make NAD. Right. You actually can't take an NAD plus capsule. Yeah, but you can get an IV. Cause, you can get an NAD cause IV. When, when my wife mm -hmm. and I got the vid, I did the monoclonals and everything, and I have and the whole bit, and it was gone like this, by the way. But my wife got NAD. Well, I was going to do the same thing, but she said after she got it, it she had more. I mean, and my wife like has some issues. Like mm -hmm. She's always chronically something. But... <laughs> energy rise yeah but she said man she she was like her energy's never oh. been higher never been better after yes. that nad the reason i didn't do it is because when she was getting it they said your chest can hurt and she was like it they're looked, just running it, it looked too like fast. she was freaking dying and i'm no. like does that hurt she said it hurt they're running it. it way too fast they just need to slow the iv drip down if you give something called trimethylglycine TMG, which is just a liquid, liquid amino acid, TMG. If you give trimethylglycine and run that IV slow, she'll have none of those symptoms. If you run the IV too fast, you're oversaturating those receptors. Yeah, right? You got to gotta allow the body to absorb it. Well, to me, I listen to my body. That's one of my longtime rules. People made fun of me. Now they're wearing braces and freaking they got injuries and, they, mm -hmm. and, they're, and they're, they're crippled, basically. Yeah. I feel great. I can run and walk and mm -hmm. I have no hip problem, no joint problem, no joint pain. I have no problems, mm -hmm. but that's because I listen to my body. If I was at the gym hitting it mm -hmm. and, and the next day I feel like it's so sore, it hurts. Mm -hmm. That's to me, I may be wrong, but that's my body saying, don't do that shit. Oh yeah. Joint pain. You want to listen to joint pain. Muscle soreness is, is great for you. Joint I, pain is yeah, terrible like for you. Light muscle soreness. Yeah. Light muscle soreness. It, especially when you get massages, when you're a little bit sore. They're <laughs> yeah. The best, dude. Uh -huh. But I'm talking about like pain. Like, dude, my elbow shouldn't be feeling painful as I'm, no. as I'm lifting a weight. Yeah. No, those are, those are your muscle origin insertions in the joints. I mean, that's yeah. where we get actual pain. Rarely does a muscle create a lot of pain, right? Yeah. The belly of a muscle. But, so, I'd, so I'd put the weight down and not work out for a, a week. People say, pussy, power through it. Well, guess what? Now they're wearing braces. Oh yeah. No question. And, and, and those compression bandages. I'm, used, I'm a hundred percent great. So when the NADA hurt, I thought I ain't doing it. Why? Because if it hurts, that's your body saying, don't do this. Yeah, no, just slow the dosage down. NAD drips well, why can take they know 60 to, do that? to 90 minutes. Well, they, sh they should have known to do that. I mean, if you're responsibly running NAD on a patient, you should know that the drip rate is important. Another, dosage and drip rate are very important. Another plug for 10X Health System. Mm -hmm. 10xhealthsystem.com because you uh, uh, someone can go to that and get dialed in on more shit than we're talking about oh they can go to 10xhealthsystem.com i mean they could be a franchise partner of ours they could um of grants and, and mine and brandon's um they could open open blood one. work done they could open a 10x health clinic and we'll help them how with many their, have you opened now we took 390 applications and i think we've approved 58 so far that was just since april and they're popping up all over and they're popping up all over aventura yeah. naples you know uh california la they're going to be big one of these days because it's basically 
true anti-aging. It really is. And longevity. Because, you know, coming from the, coming from the mortality space, you know, I borrowed a lot of that knowledge from the mortality space. I mean, if you understand what makes people die, then you conversely understand what makes people live. And the sad thing about my previous career was I, I wasn't allowed to have any contact with the patient or any contact with the treating physician, now, partially because I'm not licensed to practice medicine, but also because they don't want someone from an insurance company getting involved in the medical care of the patient. But the sad thing is, even if we saw life-threatening drug interactions, we couldn't have any communication with the patient. That's so crazy. it was terrible. I mean, I felt like I was just sitting behind a thick glass wall just watching blind people walk into traffic. Mm. And, um, you know, eventually I, I realized there was human beings on the other side of those spreadsheets. And that's what made me make a conscious decision to leave that career and kind of touch the face of humanity by getting into the wellness space. Um, and then Grant Cardone uh, and Brandon Dawson bought us last September. I don't think the last time I was here, I don't think Grant had acquired us yet. I don't remember. Maybe. If it was before September. In any case, um, Whatever, and whatever, whatever it happened, you know, Grant doesn't buy stupid shit. So <laughs> no, he, he definitely he doesn't must have saw an opportunity. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, so he bought dude, us with, he's got a business genius on board named Brandon Dawson. And that guy can, Brandon Dawson knows a how smart to scale a business. A he is a smart son of a gun for sure. Are, and I'm sure they're all in the oxygen bag. Oh, they're they all the dilates. <laughs> Grant, Grant uses his red light bed and his oxygen and his PMF every single day. Yeah. Every single day. He well, hates to I travel need, when he's away from it. Dialed in with the, some of that. All right. And if I'll anybody's listening wants dialed in, get a hold of Gary at Gary Brecka, by the way. Very simple. G A R Y? Yeah. G A R Y. Double. You got anything for vision? I do. G A R Y B R E C K A. Yeah, but you got anything for old eyes? Well, I mean, a lot of times what happens is you get inflammation in the eye. It actually changes the intraocular pressure. If you return intraocular pressure to normal, you return the eye shape to normal. Now, I don't know if you have an astigmatism or some other no. ailment, something going wrong. 2020 with vision, it's just, uh, at least the, the eye doctor said, as you get older, it stops flexing. Hmm. And when it flexes microscopically, you're focusing. Mm -hmm. So basically, the older you get, the less it will flex and focus. Because he said I had 2020, and I'm like, dude, I need readers. Like, I can't tell if that's one R or two. Yeah, he's talking about intraocular pressure, right? So if the intraocular pressure increases, think of a balloon. If you add air to it, it gets less flexible. If you take air out of it, it will get more flexible. So, so the main way to like start this whole party is to get your blood work. The main thing that you want to do, was, if you only did one test in your lifetime, you'd want to do the gene test. Yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. And then the second one you'd want to do is the blood work. You'd want to do this. I don't know. if the, Are we on camera? Yep. Can they see that? So this is this is Brad's. Brad has the MTHFR gene mutation. I won't tell you what the nickname is for that gene. And you asked if it was red or yellow. It's I see red. a red and a yellow. Yeah. So this is um, this is a complete inability to, to process folic acid. Right? So you're... Uh, that doesn't sound like a big and, deal. And by the way, by the way, my kids might have the same thing or do. If I do, they do. A hundred percent. If you're red, they, they are at least yellow. So you get one copy from one parent, one copy from the other parent. Um, MTHFR is the most common gene mutation in the world. 44% of the population has it. Um, ironically, 44% of the population reports being on an antidepressant at some point in their lifetime. And... This, when, when folic acid, which is the most prevalent nutrient in the human diet, when we take in folic acid, it's in all white flour, white rice, white bread, white pasta, all of our is grains, good for us? all of our cereals, it's horrible for you. So you don't want folic acid? No, we don't want folic acid. Folic acid doesn't occur is anywhere that, naturally in nature. But does that red say I don't process it? You That's do good. not process it. That's no, good. No, you do not process it. So you can't turn it into the active form that your body needs. You see, there's not a single compound known to mankind, not one, that enters the human body that's used in the format that we put it in. Everything that enters the human body gets converted into its usable form, right? This conversion is called methylation, right? It's like we pull crude oil out of the ground, but you can't put crude oil directly into your gas tank, right? Because the car doesn't understand that fuel source. Crude oil has to be refined into gasoline, well, that refining process in the human body is called methylation. And if your methylation is broken, you get things like anxiety, anxiousness, depression, ADD, ADHD, OCD. You have trouble falling asleep because your mind keeps you awake. Now, now would I be an anomaly if I said 
None of those. No. Even no. with the red? Well, because you're probably not eating a lot of folic acid. I bet your yeah. diet is not full of white bagels, white rice, no, white a lot of low pasta, carb. white white flour. If you if you were eating a lot of grains, flours, breads, pastas, um, whites, you would it would be a disaster for you. So the it's one of the leading causes of postpartum depression in pregnant females because sadly what happens is 44% of women have this gene mutation too. And then they get pregnant and the doctor tells them to take high doses of folic acid. Even, even though folic acid doesn't occur anywhere naturally in nature, it doesn't occur anywhere on the surface of the earth. Right? They, they say take this unnatural man-made chemical because it'll prevent neural tube defects. Well, 44% of the population can't process it. So when they take 1,400% of the daily allowance of, of folic acid, they get depressed. And, and then eventually the pregnancy ends and, and they stop taking the prenatal vitamin and the symptoms go away. So they blame it on the pregnancy, not on the vitamin. Mm. And, and this is true with so many different conditions in the human body. You know, there are a lot of genetically inherited diseases. We call genetically inherited diseases but no physician can tell you what gene is being passed from generation to generation to cause those diseases to be inherited. And if there isn't a gene associated with it, well, then it's not genetic. And we've mapped the entire human genome. There are no genes in the human body we're unaware of. So if there was a gene that caused a specific disease, we'd know that. Like the BRCA gene, you know, predisposes women to breast cancer. But That's close to the BRCA gene. It is close to the BRCA gene. <laughs> which will... Which will, which will Apparently Won't cause a cancer. squeezing sensation in S the breast. Squeezing sensation. Come in Tokyo. <laughs> Boy, we just really went off. Can we cut this part out? Uh, is this live? Hey, so, <laughs> well, the number one, um, the pills you sent me. Yes. The five. Five methylfolate. Yeah, the five methylfolate. So I just start taking one of you those. You call them the morning. five motherfucker pills. Yeah. It's well, five MTHF. Yeah, well, that I call that the motherfucker gene. It is the motherfucker gene. <laughs> so I got the motherfucker gene. So the, these pills, if I take it, then now I will process folic acid as it should be. It's not that you'll process folic acid. Is that we're we're not going to give you crude oil. We're going to give you gasoline. In other words, since your body can't refine folic acid into methylfolate, we're just going to give you methylfolate. But should I stop? Should I? Take in as low amounts as I can. Yes, I would take in as little folic acid as you can. Think about this. You know, we, we when we started spraying the grain supply in 1992, the U.S. federal government decided we would spray our entire grain supply with folic acid, this man-made chemical. And so all grains, all, all rice, all flour, we, we don't call it sprayed with folic acid. We call it fortified or enriched, right? So if you spin a box of crackers around, you see the words fortified or enriched, that means sprayed with folic acid. Mm. Okay. So now let's take a child, six, seven, eight years old, nine years old, and they're getting ready for school in the morning. They have this gene mutation and you've pumped them full of folic acid laden foods. Think about what we feed kids, pop tarts, white bagels, cocoa puffs, um, cocoa puffs, cereals, right? Any of those things. Now you just dumped folic acid into their body. And you wonder why it's a full contact sport to get the kid in the car to go to school. And then by the time they get to school, this you know, the teacher's calling and saying, hey, little Johnny can't, he can't pay attention. He doesn't concentrate, he doesn't focus. He doesn't finish his assignments. He's not following directions. He's got ADHD. We need to bring in the Ritalin to control this. And the truth is ADHD is, is not even an attention deficit disorder at all. It's an attention overload disorder. Kids and, and adults that have this condition of, of attention deficit or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, they don't have a problem paying attention. They have a problem paying attention to too many things. And in our mind, we not only create thought, but we also dismantle thought. It is just as important to be able to dismantle the neurotransmitters of thought as it is to create the neurotransmitters of thought. Because if I am creating thought at a faster rate than I'm dismantling it, then I have too many conversations going on in my head, right? So if you have ADD, then you're thinking about a job that you're working on and your friend walks up. And you start talking to your friend while you're thinking about this job you're working on and then you notice a logo on their jacket and that reminds you of a vacation you want to take. So now you're thinking about a job, talking to your friend, looking at the logo, thinking about a vacation you want to take. You know, and all of a sudden your friend goes, hey man, my grandma passed away on Sunday. And you go, that's a great idea. Because you're not tuned into that conversation because your mind's everywhere else. And then what the modern medicine wants to do is give you an amphetamine 
to speed up, race the central nervous system to match the pace of the mind. Instead of putting just amino acids into the bloodstream that allow the mind to naturally quiet itself. You know, this gene mutation right here, COMT, if that gene mutation is read, you are highly susceptible to ADD, ADHD, OCD, depressive symptoms. Yellow's right? on the way to red? Yellow's on its way to red, but it'll never be red in your case. Once it's yellow, it's always yellow. So, and, 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 and so you, what would make that flawless like my blood? Well, you, you can't fix the genes. You can supplement for their function, right? So I can't fix those genes. The, the genes you're born with are the genes you die with, but you can supplement for their function. If yeah. MTHFR converts folic acid into methylfolate, you just supplement with methylfolate. There's certain forms of B12 in the middle here that if people are supplementing with the wrong form of B12, they're destroying their gut function, right? The most common form of B12 in the world is entirely synthetic. It's man-made. And we make it from hydrogen cyanide. It's called cyanocobalamin. It's a cyanide-based B12. I mean, it's hard to believe that we're allowed to make vitamins out of hydrogen cyanide in this country, but we are. Flintstone vitamins have cyanocobalamin. So um, do airborne. So do Celsius energy drinks, right? Um, that's why, what's that? Emergency. Yeah, emergency has cyanocobalamin, cyanide-based B12. So when you put this form of B12 into the body, it drops off the cobalt metal, the cobalamin, right? Which is B12 is a metal, a light metal. It drops off the metal into the cell, and then you're left with a floating cyanide molecule. Now, the body doesn't recognize that. So in order for cyanide to leave the system, it binds to oxygen and other light metals and takes them out of the system. It's a thief, right? Like folic acid is a thief. But we've been led to believe, oh, folic acid prevents neural tube defects in pregnant women. And folic acid is a necessary part of the human diet. It's a, there's a recommended daily allowance of folic acid. I don't know how we have a recommended daily allowance of something that was never on the face of the earth until a laboratory made it. I mean, how could it be essential for, for health if we actually made it in a lab? Can, can those pills be taken by my kids? Oh, no question they can be taken by your kids. It works with the Any gummies age? all the way down to two years old. So they can chew and swallow. But I mean, is there, a, is there like a, an amount I'm, I, you prescribe oh, yeah, to it's me? Pro it's appropriate for their So uh, you don't weight. give your kids your no. D, D5 methylionamide? No. In fact, you know, right on here, um, I got a chart that actually you give gives your you the kids ages. Tested, correct? It says age four to eight, nine to 13, 14 to 18. You should definitely have your kids tested. You only do the test once in your life. Most of us are supplementing just for the sake of supplementing. So gene right? test, folks, I'm telling you right now, go get a gene test. That, that's life changing. And you don't go to 10X Health Systems for that. You go to at Gary Brecca on Instagram and DM his ass, right? Yeah, just DM me and I I'll... can't believe you don't have a page or something though. No, you can get it at, at 10X Health System too. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, either one. Well, I just want to make sure people have the the clear tactical to to because a lot of this is interesting. People are like, "Yeah, that might be me. I got kids mm -hmm. like that." Da da da. And then, and oh, then if you've got kids with ADD, their... ADHD, OCD, if you've got depression, if you have anxiety, uh, in in my, almost my my two, my little girl has anxiety. Like, dude, I'm telling you, sometimes I think to myself, like. Like what, what is she no, doing? No, she has a gene mutation that doesn't allow her to, it doesn't allow her to methylate something called homocysteine. I'll tell you three things about so her anxiety get her without a gene even test. No question. And then you guys will prescribe her the 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 right vitamins, amount the of stuff, and then she'll take her it weight, and her problem will go away. No question. If you if you ask somebody that's suffering from anxiety three questions, you can prove that it's not coming from a cluster of symptoms. It's not coming from their outside environment. It's coming from their physiology. So the first question you ask them is, have you, have you suffered from anxiety on and off throughout your entire lifetime? Almost always they will say yes. And then the second question is, can you point to the specific trigger that causes it? Can you always just point to the specific trigger that's causing your anxiety? And the majority of the time they'll say no. I can just wake up in the morning feeling anxious. I can, I can be driving home from work on an otherwise innocuous day and I can be overwhelmed with anxiety. Um, and that then must be a crazy feeling too. It's terrible because it drives them crazy because they don't know what's causing it. I mean, they can be in a calm environment like this. You know, my son's sitting there, you and I are just shooting the, shooting the shit. And all of a sudden I'm just overwhelmed with anxiety. It doesn't make sense to me 
psychologically because I go, well, there's nothing for me to be afraid of right now. Why do I have this fight or flight response? This, this lo- looming death feeling. Yeah. But it's, a, but it's a lack of raw material in the human body. When you start pulling raw materials out of the human body, which by the way, can be put back in, then you get the appearance of all kinds of pathology and diseases, hypertension, ADD, ADHD, manic depression, bipolar, um, depression, anxiety, anxiousness. All of these conditions that we think happen to us are actually happening within us because you deplete the body of raw materials. You know, we define depression in this country as an inadequate supply of serotonin, right? So if your serotonin is low, you're by definition depressed. So you would think the treatment would be to raise serotonin, but that's not what we do. We take people that are depressed and we put them on SSRIs, serotonin reuptake inhibitors, right? And what these do is they ration what little serotonin you have Right? So by definition, it never raises serotonin. So by definition, it never ends depression. So any depressions by their own definition will never end depression. They will just keep it from getting worse. They'll keep you from going off a cliff. Um, so if we understood that serotonin is a raw material, it's made in the gut. 90% of the serotonin in our body is right here. If it's not here, it can't be here. So if I want to end depression, I need to turn the serotonin factory back on in the gut. By putting the raw materials, B-complex, methylated folates, B vitamins, hydroxycobalamin, L-methionine, zincs, magnesiums, back into the human body so it can produce neurotransmitters. Did you, is that part of all that shit you sent me? Yes. Mm -hmm. So all I got to do is take it. All you have to do is take it. Uh, There's, we're not adding anything to your bloodstream that's not already in your blood right now. We're just changing the form and the amount Mm. right that's it hormonal balance hormonal balance and the body works fine that's it so so the gene test folks i would go and get that gene test for you and your kids and then the labs the blood works after that Mm -hmm. yeah the gene test is like 599 bucks you do it once in your lifetime once in your lifetime because that shit don't change you just need to figure out what you never changes so you know what you're efficient and then that'll solve all kinds of depression, anxiety, all kinds of issues that you would think, you know, you've been taking medicine for. You don't Not have only to that, you'll know exactly how to supplement for the balance of your lifetime. You won't be guessing on, do I need St. John's wort and curcumin and CoQ10? And Does that increase longevity? Certainly increases longevity. If you look at methylation and longevity, if you just Google that, you'll see that um, perfecting the DNA replication process is a recipe for longevity. You got a 10X Health in Vegas? Um, no, but we would love to open one here. You want to open one with us? Uh, yeah, well, it depends on what it costs, but yeah, <laughs> but I'm also in Nashville. You got one there? No, not yet. See, maybe I'll open here and there. That'd be great. And the dude you're going to see here in a minute, we won't mention any names. No. I'll bet you he'd open one like this. I bet he will too. Dude, I appreciate you swinging in. I, I'd keep talking to you. Awesome. You got to go or you're yep. going to miss your next appointment. Folks, if you go to the last episode we got a little deeper and stuff Mm -hmm. so go hunt down the last gary brecca episode and do yourself a favor do your family a favor go get the gene test go get the blood test and start taking care of yourself until next time keep it real dropping bombs with the real bradley subscribe now